pushing you to be more specific. It's, it's true what you said, that um, the prelude, the function of the prelude is to set a character that's going to go through the whole suite. So, but beyond that, with any piece of music, why would I, why do I always push you to tell me as precisely as possible about mood, about character? So I know what I need to base my, like, technical right. makeup. Well, you on. want to know what you want to say to the audience. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? You're a communicator. You're, you are, you're bringing a message. That's the way I think of performance anyway. That's, uh, right? Yeah. When we walk on stage, the, the more powerful and clear your own internal conception is about this piece of music and what you want to say with it, the better, the more, the more uh, compelling a performance you can give. You know? mm -hmm. So if you have some vague idea that, you know, oh yeah, this is in D minor and uh, yeah, it's dark, and that's a good start, but I'd like you to crystallize that. personal right. um, and I think that it has a lot of like longing in it Good. some like sense of like memory see now we're talking so when you, <laughs> when you start to when you start to play with those thoughts very much in your head I think you'll get a completely different sound right it's often talked about in terms of being meditative right mm -hmm. prayerful very, very personal, very inside. There's a crying aspect to it, painful. Right? Yeah. Okay. All of those kinds of things. So when you put the bow on the string, the first, you want to create an atmosphere that, because music conveys emotion and mood. That's really what this is all about. All the technical stuff we're going to be talking about is how to do that to get us to that point right? and it's not too early I really believe it's not too early right from the beginning to be thinking about that it shapes everything yeah. it's going to shape your fingerings your bowings your bow distribution it's going to shape all those technical things because right? mm -hmm. if you're thinking of it as introverted and prayerful as opposed to something neutral or something uh, here comes the cello, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're just going to use different bowings. Right. Right? So one of the other things that's like uh, basic to a prelude is that it has an improvisatory uh, aspect to it. That's different than the other movements of a dance suite where you have strict rhythm that, I mean, uh, an allemande or a karat is derived from a dance but still has a beat. Right. Right? Okay, the prelude, which is setting the mood and the character and everything, by nature, it comes, uh, it comes out of kind of the street musician that was sitting there with his lute and tuning up and just mm. improving a little bit and getting the public around and getting people in the mood and then he did his dances, you know. So, so I think when you play, for example, something like that, that's not free enough. So in a, uh, now here, so just adding another layer on, which has that little sense of freedom or just kind of the creativity of the moment. Okay, yeah. you want to try that? Okay.
Does that feel good? Yeah, it felt um, like I, I always think like, I don't know, it was definitely more free, but like the attitude of this uh, movement, like when you're sad, you don't really have a lot of limitations, you know? And like when you're crying, like you can just all of a sudden like feel better for a second and then another sob can come. Mm -hmm. And I want that feeling to be like, at any moment, like it could break down, you know? Or any moment it could get really like, to feel better. Um, so this, you know, let's talk in those terms a little bit, because that speaks to you, okay? What struck me was that if you imagine yourself spent and sad, and you know, in this very private state, you know, that there was just a little bit too much red blood in that, that when you got to... It's too early for that. Right. Okay. Uh, you didn't play it that loud. But it had that... Uh, Potential. Yes. Yeah, so I think stay more private. There's a, Now, let's add another technical thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is so deeply felt, and this is actually controversial, what I'm going to tell you. Some... You know, in the time of Bach, there wasn't that much vibrato used. So what do we do today? That's kind of a hard call, right? For me, uh, if I do this, which is pretty much what you did, without any vibrato at all, especially here, it's lacking a little, for the modern day ear, it lacks some expression. Uh, there are artists that can do that very beautiful without any vibrato, but I think we're on a modern day cello, we're in the 21st century. My particular philosophy is that we're not really trying to recreate a performance that Bach would have done here. <laughs> yeah. For well, one we thing, can't. we can't. We don't really know, right? Yeah. Um, we know certain stylistic things, but the instrument's totally changed. So the way I do, the way I believe we do justice to Bach is that we say, what is his message? What did these notes mean? What was he trying to say? And then we say it through ourselves in a way that makes sense to today's listener. Right? I think that's how music survives through the centuries, you know, rather mm -hmm. than stays as a museum piece. And that's totally debatable, and you should hear other viewpoints. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and you'll find your own. But for me, if we color it a little bit with vibrato in the mood, so we make our left hand expressive. Not in a romantic sense, not uh, not with a juicy vibrato, just but just sterile. just coloring it, yes. I'm going to try it from the fourth position. Yeah, that was fine. Next thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see? Okay, so I could hear, I could actually hear your index finger just... Mm. <laughs> okay, so let's make a clean shift, okay? Because okay. one of the things that we don't do in Bach is we don't do slides, right? That really would be out, you know, <laughs> mainly, stylistically out, right? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's a romantic concept that doesn't fit here, right? I know you didn't mean it, it was technical. But, <laughs> but I, I think uh, you can just, the simplicity, Simplicity or something a little bit Spartan about this also, right? It's without frills. And what you find for yourself has got to be different than what I find for myself. I'm just putting ideas in your head, in your creative mix, and then you're going to go home this week and you're going to stir the pot and you're going to find out what works for you. Yeah. Okay? <laughs>